recently found a really good use case for adding my own template tags to my Django project. This is our fake article here we've got, and we're just going to assume that you've maybe got some registration date that is coming up, maybe for a course or a big launch, some event, whatever it may be, and you wanna put in the date for that. This is a great use case for it, is when we've got a little bit of logic and something that's repeatable that goes across multiple templates and even multiple apps throughout your site, your project. And that's why I think this is a great case for template tags. Now, if we wanna get started, let's talk about this. First, we have to set up a template tag folder structure. And I this is my core project for folder, the one that I started this project with. It has my settings.py in it. So that's where I tend to put template tags because they are usually site-wide. And I just like to put in all of the site-wide stuff in this folder because I feel like that's a good way to for me to, to conceptualize where things should go. But you can feel free to put this wherever. Um, we're gonna set this up. So I'm gonna create a brand new folder called template tags. And we're also going to add in a file here, the dunder init, oops. So that's two underscores init two underscores dot pi. And that just allows us to be able to now use this and import files from this folder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one more file here and I'm going to call this one date tags dot pi. And the reason why is because we're, we're gonna go with that example of maybe there's some kind of registration date. The first thing we have to do for all of our template tags, no matter what you're doing, is we're gonna import them from Django import template. After that, it's any other imports that you may need. In this case, we're going to grab time zone just so that we have a quick and easy way to create a date object. So import time zone. So now that we have our imports done, now we have one more thing left to do. This is also going to be standard with any, any of your template tags is we need to register them. So we're going to create a register uh, and set that equal to template dot library. Oops, that's a capital L. Thank you. There we go. And open and close parentheses. So now we can use this register kind of like a, a decorator. If you're familiar with using that maybe in the admin, a little decorator that goes above our function. And it's going to be called, uh, so we go at register dot simple underscore tag and then we can go ahead and define our function. This is our, our template tag. And I'm gonna call it registration date because I want this tag to just display my date. I want it to display it in the right format as well. I'm using US conventions, so I wanna make sure that it's a certain convention. Maybe my company uses a very specific way of displaying their dates. I want that to be expressed using this tag so I don't have to add extra filters or other things that would make things complicated if you had to do them multiple times throughout different templates. So we're gonna create a date. Since this is just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna set it to timezone.now so that it can just grab whatever it is right now, the date. But this is a great opportunity for you to either maybe pull in an object, um, an instance from, from one of your models, if it has the date registered there, or maybe a settings file, you, you could come up with a lot of ways to get your date and, and make it more extensible rather than just hard coding the current date that it is right now. But either way, we just need a date object. And then what we wanna do is return a date, uh, that same date, but we're gonna string format it with time. That's date.strf time. We're gonna open our parentheses and single quotes. And I'm gonna use the uh, percentage capital B, percentage lowercase d, comma, percentage y, so that we can use kind of that US format for dates. <laughs> and that's how we're gonna say our convention is for our site. Now, wherever I put in this registration date, it's just gonna take care of that for me. We're gonna go now set this up so that we can actually use this in our templates. 
So the next thing to do here, this is a little bit strange, a little bit different than maybe your, your standard include uh, something more simple. You do need to go into your settings file and we're gonna go look for our templates variable right here. Most of this is default. Let me open that up for you. We're going to see a lot of different things here. Yours will probably differ quite a lot from what I have here. Um, I've added a couple of things, but the thing to look for for template tags is inside of this options, which should you should already have this at least. So in your options, we need to add a library's uh, key value here. So we're gonna go at the end of our context processors and we're going to add a brand new entry right here. We're gonna call it libraries, that's plural, and we're gonna set this to, not parentheses, curly braces, and we're going to add in our date tags. That was the name of my file. That's what I want to call these collection of tags. And I'm going to set this wherever you stored your template tags directory. You're going to grab that app name and put it right in here. So in my case, it's NDT platform. Yours will be very different. NDT platform dot template tags because we're accessing the folder template tags inside of our app. So it's the app name, the folder name, and then we called our actual file right here, date underscore tags. So I'm gonna do a dot date underscore tags and add a comma at the very end. And I think we are good to go. I might add one just at the end of here just to be safe for, for next time. <laughs> but I'm gonna save that. We now have access for whatever is inside of here, any more functions we add into this, whatever we want to do with it, uh, that's gonna be loaded into our templates when we load in our date tags. So let's pop over to the template to see how that works. All right, so here is my template for that article that I showed you. And we are going to do a couple of things. Right up top here, you can see I already have a load static. Now we do have to load in our date tags. And the way we can do that is by duplicating this and changing this static to date underscore tags, because that's what we set in as the name in the settings file. Or even better, you can actually just string them together like this so that you only have one load tag and I feel like that just makes things a little bit cleaner. So now we've loaded our date tags, meaning we have the option to use our date tags function in there. Now all we have to do is let's put in um, a little registration call out here, register by, and then we can add in our registration tag. So again, we called it registration date. So I'm gonna copy this over from our date tags and we're just gonna act as if this was a built-in Django tag with this curly brace percentage and then the name and then close it out with the percentage curly brace. So if I save and we pop back over to our article, we now see that we have our registration date and it is formatted the way that our company wanted us with the conventions that they have. And the cool thing about this is now any template on any app, anywhere in my project, I can just do that same thing. Load in the tags, use that tag to then stuff in the registration date according to our conventions. I don't have to remember it. I don't have to use a filter. It's all in one place. And that way, if something changes, maybe we don't need to say the year anymore. We can just go back in here and update it all at once across the entire site, which is super, super nice. There we go. If you wanna check out a discussion on when you should use a custom context processor versus using a custom template tag, go ahead and check out this video right over here.